Welcome back. Today we're talking about a graphic novel. Uh, and I know a lot of people maybe don't consider uh, comics and graphic novels to be part of literature, but actually I think that they are a very valid part of literature. And one of the avenues uh, that feeds me some very good suggestions uh, with regard to great graphic novels is a festival in southwestern France called the Angoulême uh, International Festival for Comics. It is the prime best festival for comics in the world and uh, every year they award a uh, grand prize to the best comic of the year. And so this year uh, the prize was won by this uh, comic called The Hunting Accident which was written by David L. Carson and illustrated by uh, Landis Blair. Uh, so it's a very interesting graphic novel in the sense that it is a true story uh, which takes place in uh, various stages. It goes back and forth in history, but essentially it takes place in the 1930s in the US. Uh, and it's the story of a young man called Charlie Rizzo who uh, is uh, on a slow and steady path towards becoming a, a young delinquent gangster and his father Matt Rizzo is a blind man who's a bit of a failed author and uh, the story behind his blindness is that he was blinded in a stupid childhood hunting accident uh, per the title uh, and as his son Charlie uh, slides towards this life of gangsterism and, and gets into trouble with the law Matt Rizzo, the blind man, decides to tell his son the truth about where the blindness comes from. And it turns out that actually he was blinded in a robbery gone wrong when he got shot in the face by a shotgun. And this sort of kicks off the meat of the story. The whole, the whole story of Charlie is really a narrative framing device. The whole meat of the story is the story of Matt Rizzo, this blind man, in jail in uh, Stateville Prison in Illinois, where he shares a cell with a man called Nathan Leopold. And Nathan Leopold was part of a uh, duo of killers called Leopold and Loeb, who in the 20s killed a young boy to try to prove their intellectual superiority uh, and try and prove they could commit the perfect crime and that they were above laws. And they got caught. And so uh, it was called the crime of the century. And uh, Nathan Leopold was sort of this much reviled figure uh, in the prison. And so it turns out that Matt Rizzo, the blind man, and Nathan Leopold share a cell. And they are gonna discover a common humanity and forge a common path towards redemption for their sins um, through uh, not only navigating the horror of, of prison and prison life and other inmates and so on, but also through a shared uh, discovery and understanding of uh, the book The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, who was a 13th, 14th century Italian poet who wrote this book, The Divine Comedy, which basically invented or at least popularized uh, the idea of an afterlife and uh, who, who really illustrated this is specifically what happens to you if you commit certain sins and, and depicted a horrible version of hell, but also a version of purgatory and heaven. Um, so it's a sort of allegory of uh, the, the path towards the afterlife and how we might redeem our sins. I'm not sure whether in the true story, and it is a true story that Matt Rizzo and Nathan Leopold share to sell, but I'm, I'm not sure if they really read together and discussed uh, the Divine Comedy because that would just be taking the allegory to an altogether too real level. Uh, but it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, if it is, and if it's artistic embellishment by the authors, then uh, well done for doing that. Uh, so, like I said, it's a story of crime. It's a story of truth. Uh, the, the, the lies that you tell to your family, the crimes that you commit towards the system, and how we might... Uh, try and fix our mistakes and redeem our sins. Uh, did the story deserve to be told in a graphic form like this or could it have been told simply as a novel? Um, I'm not sure if that question makes any sense actually. I, I don't think it's a binary question. It's not exclusive. It might have very well been told as a novel. Uh, but I think in this uh, form as a graphic novel it was very well told thanks to the art uh, by Landis Blair, uh, who does a pretty phenomenal job. His art style can best be described as 
a mix between uh, Robert Crumb uh, that has that really textured, detailed feeling where every sort of shadow is really illustrated well, and the other artist that's, that might be thrown into that blend is the cartoonist from The New Yorker, Ross Chast, who anybody who's read The New Yorker will immediately recognize her cartoons. They're sort of very vibrant and jumpy and testy, and there's that sort of constant vibration in her artwork. And so there's, there's uh, a bit of both of that. Some of the artwork in the book is truly amazing. It's really... Uh, some, some amazing frescoes that are spread out throughout the uh, graphic novel. Two-page spreads, magnificently drawn. On the downside, there are occasionally some uh, some art works, little squares that are that feel a little bit rushed. And so I, I guess you know, you, not not everything can be perfect, uh, but some of it did feel a little uh, juvenile at times. Um, so yeah, ultimately interesting story about um, you know going through hell and coming out of the other side. Uh, it's not clear necessarily that the Leopold character in the graphic novel does achieve redemption from either his loved ones or the system. Uh, I had to look up his life and uh, discovered that actually he was released uh, early on parole after a couple of decades, several decades in prison. Uh, but at the end of this graphic novel, it's not clear that necessarily he makes it uh, to a uh, better place. Uh, so it's a pretty thick uh, graphic novel. It's about 464 pages, but it reads very quickly. Uh, the artwork is arranged in a way that the, the, the thing flows in a very easy way. It's not, you know, like a typical comic where it's square, 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 square. Uh, there are there are different ways that the story is arranged in in a very cool way that that further the story. So, in that sense, yes, it's it's maybe better told as a graphic story. Uh, but it's easy to get into. It's easy to uh, identify with the characters and with their struggles. The struggle of, of the main character. There is uh, a side story in the book regarding Matt Rizzo, the blind man's uh, novel. So, so after he comes out of jail uh, and, and he's talking to his son, uh, he has written a novel and it was hard to get into that, uh, th that storyline. That was less useful. And I think, quite frankly, that could have been cut without any major damage to the story. But... Uh, who's to say? You know, maybe the authors felt very strongly about it. So overall, uh, a nice graphic novel. I quite enjoyed it, uh, and I would recommend it to anybody who's looking for some uh, quality, in-depth uh, graphic novel that elevates the level beyond, uh, you know, superhero comics or, or what have you.